What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, been a while since the last video um, and I will be making a very very short and quick video explaining um, my absence for the past couple of weeks. But today, I finally, finally have with me the five start decks for Cardfight Vanguard Overdress. So, for those of you that don't know what Overdress is, Overdress is the new format for Cardfight Vanguard. These start decks have already been out for basically a week now. Um, I just only now was able to get them. But I'm going to be opening up all five and I'll be doing very, very short um, descriptions and, you know, um, just main gameplay mechanics of each of these uh, each of these start decks today. So that's what we're going to be doing and yeah, let's get straight into it, shall we? So, we have our five start decks. We have we have our Dragon Empire, we have our Dark States, our Keter Sanctuary, Stoikeia and Brent Gate here. So, for those of you that don't know, in Overdress, all of the clans have been assimilated into nations. So one thing that some people had an issue with with um, with old Vanguard was, oh yeah, I I um I buy a deck, or I start building a deck, and then I get no support for a year. Now personally, this is one thing that I've always never really seen the problem with. If I can play a game that I want to play and not have to shell out a hundred plus or two hundred plus dollars every single time a new um, a new staple comes out. I'm not complaining. <laughs> but um, now with this new nation system over the clan system, whenever a new set comes out, every nation will get support for existing what we call ride lines and for new ride lines. So ride lines are basically a... Um, basically a certain type of build in a nation. So for example, we have our first start deck here, which is the Dragon Empire start deck. And this, uh, this ride line in particular, the Chakrabarthi, uh, let's see, Chakrabarthi Divine Dragon Nirvana build um, focuses on supporting Virena, which is the overdress mechanic. <clears throat> now, I'll get straight into this. So each of these start decks is, I believe, $399 MSRP US dollars. So these are super cheap. Now, the reason for that being is because start decks in Vanguard have been notorious, very, very notorious for being one, super cheap, and two, low rarity. So normally in a trial deck for Vanguard, you'll get a bunch of different foiled cards just like you would in Yu-Gi-Oh! But um, start decks generally only came with one foil uh, one foil card, but basically play sets of everything that you needed to get started. So you would, these are, they're super cheap, but you don't have to go out and buy four of these to have a complete deck. So let's, uh, I'll just get straight into, um, and straight into what I mean. So first card that we have here, is Chakrabarthi Divine Dragon Nirvana. So this is the only foil that you will get in uh, the start deck. So basically the uh, the mascot of every uh, start deck is the only foil that you'll get. So you get one uh, foil version and three normal ones. Again, you know, you know, if you wanted to, I wouldn't suggest it, um, but you could always get, you could always pick up four of these if you wanted to foil these out, but there is a, festival set that's coming out that does reprint this in a um, in a foil rarity I believe I'm not sure if um, it's Nirvana I'll have to recheck the um, the set list for it but there is a special set coming out that is reprinting a lot of the start deck cards in um, I believe is triple rare foiling so that that's really uh, that's really nice to have and SPs so here we go Chagabarthi Divine Dragon Nirvana its first ability is Act this card a card from your hand, choose a grade zero card from your drop, and call it to rear guard. And second ability, when it attacks, counter blast one, this unit and all of your units with the overdress ability gain 10,000 until end of turn. So, 
Um, its first ability helps you get Trickstar. Uh, Trickstar out of your drop zone. This is your recursion with the deck because Trickstar and Virena are the main parts of this deck. So we have four uh, Nirvana. Next we have uh, four copies of Blaze Maiden Rayu. This is your main ride target. This will be most likely in your ride deck which um, basically guarantees that you'll be able to ride all of your ride targets. Um, properly during a game. So its ability is when it is rode upon by Nirvana, Soul Blast, search your deck for up to one Virena, reveal it and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Then its second ability is um, you know, generic um, generic power boost when it's um, during the battle that this unit attacked from either the Vanguard or the Rearguard gains 2k. So that is that. Next we have Blaze made in Reno. This is our grade one ride target, our our um, our general target for this. And its ability is her ability is when she's rode upon by Rayu, search your deck for up to one trick star, call it to rear guard, and then shuffle your deck. Very, very straightforward ability. And the second ability is the same as Rayu's, gets 2000 when it um, attacked. It doesn't ha get it when it boosts, sadly, but um, yeah. Again, start deck. So start decks um, historically haven't had the most competitive cards, but have always given a very solid build in a certain direction. The, one of the best ones um, that I can think of in history is the Gurgwit start deck that came out during the G format. And um, that was one of my favorite decks to play. Um, uh, in, in that era. So next we have our starting vanguard, our sunrise egg uh, starter uh, starter vanguard of course uh, this is part of the ride deck and its ability is when it is rode upon if you went second draw a card. So now for all of my uh, V era heads that are transitioning over into overdress you don't get to draw if you go first. <laughs> you don't get the extra draw if you go first. So Here's our sunrise egg, and then next, this is our this is uh, the rest of the deck. So these basically are our um, our ride targets, and um, with the with the introduction of the ride deck, you will always be able to ride these units or whatever units you want to put in your ride deck, um, unless. <laughs> Unless you don't want to. So that is that. Next we have uh, the generic support and of course the, the overdress uh, units. So we have first, we have Fire Slash Dragon Inferno Sword. This is a generic grade 3. We get 3 copies of this. Its ability is during the battle that this unit attack is plus 2000. Very straightforward. Next we have the main star of the deck basically. We have Virena. So Virena's ability is Overdress Trickstar. You may place it by stacking it on the specified unit instead of normal calling it to the rear guard circle. Now you want to be able to do this. You want to be able to put Trickstar down onto the field as a rear guard and then call Virena over because you do not get to activate any of Virena's abilities if you are not in Overdress. Now that is a um, big thing with, um, with the Dragon Empire start deck. Now with the booster sets coming out now and um, second set already starting to get its Japanese releases, we are getting more and more varieties of different ways to play Dragon Empire. But right now this seems to be the most uh, the most consistent if you want to keep getting good support because this is the main character deck. So Virena's ability is when in uh, when this unit is in the overdress state and attacks the Vanguard, the unit gets plus 10k into under battle, then Soul Blast 2, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So it gets plus 10 and gets to retire for 2 Soul Blast. And you get 4 copies of uh, Virena. And then uh, this is this is just the vanilla, has no abilities whatsoever. You get 3, that's nice. And here we go, we get 4 uh, Escort Stealth Dragon Hayashi Kaze. Um, is our Sentinel? Pretty straightforward. Yep. <laughs> so. It, you do get Sentinel, you do get a playset of Sentinels in the start decks, but you want to also try to get the ones from the boosters because one, they're only single R, which means they're so much easier to get, and two, 
they have another added ability on top not really an added ability but more of a modified ability to um their sentinel um their sentinel status so that is nice next we have four uh four copies of a toric star so this opponent this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects there we go so you get four copies of that and next we move into the grade zeros and triggers Oh, you, just, just the triggers, basically. So, the first card that we have here is our Over Trigger. Now, this is another new mechanic that has been introduced through Overdress. So, Over Triggers, you can only have one in your deck. You cannot have a playset of these. They did not cheap out and only give you one for no reason. So, the Over Trigger, um, when you reveal it as a trigger so that whether it is as a damage check or as a drive check one of your unit you get to draw one of your units gets plus 100 million power then you remove the card from the deck you remove the card from the game and you activate um this ability you, you activate its second ability so its additional effect is choose one of your units and it gets plus 10 100 million until end of turn so Two of your units get plus 100 million until end of turn, which is um, really nice. Some people think that this is broken, and I am on the fence of it being very situational, because if you get this during the early game, then it doesn't really matter. You're going to take damage anyway. And if you, but if, and if late game, that's the only time that you really think that, um, you, that that's really the only time that, um, that over triggers really do make a difference, but I haven't been in any situations where like where i was going damn if that over trigger hadn't happened then i would have won this game i've never i have not had that experience that of course some other people might have um but of course you know one in a deck and super situational so um that's olbaria all of the start decks have olbaria so as we go through you'll see more of them and then we have our triggers. So uh, what's nice about these, especially um, for new players, is that they it tells you how these things work. Okay, so we have uh, we have four crit triggers. We have one, two, three, four draws. And the nice thing about overdress is front triggers have become universal. So it's not uh, since there are no more imaginary gifts. Um, front triggers have become accessible to all uh, all nations and then we have of course our four heal triggers which is very nice and then we have three order cards now order cards have become more prevalent in a lot in all of the decks basically um, going into overdress so this will be changing the way that people build decks um, on top of, of course, the ride, the ride deck being able to, you know, make, I, I've, you know, I, I've thought about it a little bit and, uh, you know, the ride deck has made deck building a lot more flexible because you don't have to conform to ratios anymore. But, um, I feel like that has been, that has given way to, um, to start, uh, to decks being able to more freely add in um, order cards and there are some cards there are some decks that explicitly rely on being able to have specific orders um, out on the field or be you know um, being used so we have sunburst evolution so play this with one counter blast choose one of your units it gets plus five until end of turn choose a virena from your drop zone and add it to your hand so that's nice uh, for one counter blast <laughs> so now one of the I've played this deck a little bit and one of the best fields that I've been able to um one of the most at least uh one of the most consistent fields is just having is just having Nirvana of course as your vanguard and overdressing Virena with uh with Trickstar and anything basically like these start decks give you a very a very decent and basic understanding of how to play the game and gives you um, very short combos. So what you would want to do, of course, if possible at the beginning of your turn, is to Persona, 
So Persona Riding, this new little abil new little icon here, Persona Ride. Once you ride a unit with the same name as your current Vanguard, as long as it has this ability, this little icon here, you are in Persona Ride for that turn. So your entire front row gets plus 10 and you get to draw a card. So that gives you as the turn player a very big boost in offensive power especially if you're trying to end now a lot of um I, i've seen uh quite a few quite a few decks and i don't see any personally that wouldn't benefit from persona riding but of course the the format as a whole is still in its infancy so we might see things we might start seeing uh deck builds that you know don't have that much of a priority in in persona writing but uh then again we'll have to we'll still have to see but anyway so nirvana would be able to attack then counterblast one to give itself and if I, any all of your overdressed units plus uh plus 10 so maybe you know if you had enough resources then you could have you know another overdressed Virena on the other side so that your entire front row gets another plus 10 and I believe that's how it works right yes all of your units with the overdress ability so even if you only had the Virena you could do that now um you wouldn't get its second second ability but you were <laughs> this would still be 30k on its own because the 10k from persona riding and the 10k from Nirvana's it on on battle uh, on attack ability so that would be 30 then this would be 40 plus the boost so that is that is the simplest uh simplest field setup that i can think of with the dragon empire deck moving on into the next one all right so the second deck that we have here is danji momoyama's uh dark states deck now this um this start deck, its main this start deck's main mechanic is called Final Rush. So, as you can as you can probably tell from the name, it um, basically you know pushes it, it, it you blitz you're blitzing your opponent basically. Now the main unit here is called Diabolos Violence Burus. Now. Of all five start decks, this is the one that I'm excited for the most. And if you guys watch um, my other series, Overdressed to Impress, um, it's this is a very, uh, very popular, uh, popular deck that um, everybody, almost uh, basically half of the, uh, the the guys that are playing in that tournament want as um, their participation press. So. <laughs> So we get four copies of uh, Diabolos Violence Bruce. So his ability is at the start of your ride phase. So at the very beginning of your turn, right after you draw before you ride, you enter final rush as long as this is your your existing vanguard while that happens. So basically turn four and beyond, you are final rushing every single freaking turn. <laughs> now it also has the persona ride ability. And guess what? Even if you ride over um, after Final Rush activates, you are still in Final Rush for that turn. So you can Persona Ride and just hit for huge giant numbers. <laughs> so his first ability is, at the start of your ride phase, you are in Final Rush. Then it's other, his other ability is, when he attacks, if you are in Final Rush, Soul Blast 5 and stand all of your front row rear guards. Now, getting to Soul Blast 5 sounds a little difficult, but... When you start at zero, you go to one, two, and then three, you have so zero, one, and two, you have three souls right off the bat. And then the other abilities, um, the other the other units in the ride line, your main ride line pumps your soul for you passively. So by the time that you hit grade three, you can already start to do um, Bruce shenanigans. Or if you want to hold it until your first final rush turn, then that's very easy to do. <laughs> so there we go. If you're in final rush, stand all of your front row rear guard units. If you persona ride, 
and you are final rushing and you activate this ability, your opponent is not going to have a fun time because of what the other cards do. We're gonna, <laughs> gonna get straight into it. So we get four of him, of course. Next we get Diabolos Anger Richard. <laughs> uh, so his ability is when he's placed on Vanguard Circle, put another unit into your soul and draw a card. There you go. By the time you hit Bruce, you're already at four soul minimum. Minimum. Actually, no, you're probably already at five soul because of Steve. But um, his other ability is if you are in final rush, if he's your rear, if he's a rear guard and you're in final rush, he gets plus 5k. So he's a 15k slapajama on his own. Next, we have Diabolos Bad Steve. Now, Steve's ability is when this unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, choose a card from your soul, call it to the back row, center, rear guard, and soul charge one. So, it, he sets up Richard. He sets up Richard. You can put your starter back into your soul um, after, after slapping with him. And his other ability, of course, is the same as uh, same as uh, same as Richard over here. If you are in final rush, you gain 5k. Then your starting vanguard is Diabolos Innocent Matt, as you can see. Um, when this unit is rode upon, if you went second, draw a card. Next, we have Time Fissuring Fist Colossus. When this unit is placed on rear guard, soul charge one. Then, if you are in final rush, counter blast one. Then this unit gets plus 15k until end of turn. Yes, that is right. He is 38k and restands if you persona ride and uh, are in final rush uh, with Bruce. So, yes, that is girls. That is great. So, that's uh, that's very nice. Now, uh, Icicle Ein Isa is a vanilla grade 2, has no abilities whatsoever. Next, we have Steam Gunner Barodi. When he's placed on Guardian Circle, Counter Blast 1, then this unit gets plus 5 until end of turn. So, this can be from the hand or it can be from um, intercepting, but he is a 10k shield. Next is Acrobat Presenta. When this unit attacks or boosts, if your opponent, if your, if your vanguard is Diabolos, Violence, Bruce, Soul Charge 1, then if you're in Final Rush, Soul Charge 2. So, yeah, they're all, and you get four copies of him. So all of these cards, all of these cards are just, um, you know, pumping up your soul. Pump it, jam, pump it up. Now we have Psychic Prima Miranda. He's, she is our, uh our sentinel for this uh for this start deck very nice <clears throat> and we have of course obaria then diabolos girls my my as our crit diabolos boys the jake yake as um our draw then diabolos officer killian as our front turiga and diabolos girls ariana as our heel and then we get three uh, brother's soul and you know what it does you know you know what you know what this does guess what it soul charges too and there are no once per turn clauses on order cards so guess what if you get all three you can soul charge six you know how many times you can slap your opponent with Bruce's ability because of these cards a lot you can do it a lot now one main problem with this deck is that it literally does nothing until turn four but that's okay, you know. You just have to play a certain way. And guess what? I've been rhyming, and I'm, I'm I haven't I wasn't even trying. But <laughs> so the um, a good field probably for um, for Bruce would be if you if you didn't have any Richards or uh, or Steves on the field, you just you you know let's uh, make it a, a little realistic, right? Okay. So you don't want to use up too much counter blast because that's 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 number good. That's number one. You don't want to use up all your counter blast and not be able to have counter blast again. So let's, uh, you know, let's just look at the front row, and let's see. So there's one, two, three, and then let's say we brothers sold, and then we uh, <laughs> we put two heels in. We put two heels in our soul. So this is our this is our soul so far. So one, two, three, four, five. Boom, and then these are. Let's say these are in our hand, because you know we're not, we're not, we not dumb. We don't want to put, we don't want to put, we don't want to commit too much to our field before we can final rush. So you, you've already hit grade three. 
it's your turn again. Your opponent's you know, been slapping you a little bit. And it's your turn, you draw, and would you look at that, a Bruce, boom! So first, before you even ride, you enter Final Rush. So now this ability is active, and boom. So now you Persona Ride, you get to draw another card, and would you look at that, you drew a Time Fissuring Fist Colossus. So Soul Charge 1, when it is placed on Rear Guard Circle, then if you are in Final Rush, which we are, Counter Blast 1, then this unit gains 15k, and you can call Richard to the side over here. We're not even we're not even gonna look at the back row. Alright, so we would have Richard attack Richard attack first, since uh, he is the smaller unit, so that's five plus ten plus the ten from our uh, Persona Rai, that's twenty-five. Then we have Fissuring Colossus attacking for thirty-eight. Then we have Violence Bruce attacking for whatever number hit he whatever number that is, twenty-three minimum. So you twin drive. Well, when you actually no, when you attack, Soul Blast five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's leave. Uh, let's leave Innocent Matt here. He hasn't done anything wrong. Um, so boom, you stand both of your front row rear guards, and guess what? If you get any triggers, if you get any triggers, boom, boom. They get all those effects. Guess what? How? Guess how big that is now? <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I'm. Uh, uh, I'm a little off the rocker. <laughs> so Richard's 45, so you swing for 45, and Time Fish Colossus is uh, 38 plus 20, uh, 58. Well, there you go. That is uh, that is the type of setup that you want with a Violence Bruce deck because he is full of violence. Look, just look at the man. Look at the man. He has a skull and tentacles on his on his breast plate right there. He is built. He is made. For violence and that is it for the dark states moving on into the keter sanctuary start deck number three we have toya uh ebata and his uh apex ruler start deck for the keter sanctuary this is all of our united sanctuary boys put together boys and boys and ladies because there are ladies in this deck of course we uh we want we want uh, good exposure and uh, equal representation. That was a little bit before. But anyway, here we go. We have Apex Ruler Bastion. So this deck is, is great threes. It's literally really great threes. Morikawa would be, would be, you know, he's just he's bouncing around in his seat. So Apex Ruler Bastion. During your turn, all of your great three units get plus two K. Wow! Wow! Much! Wow! Oh my gosh! That's amazing. No, that's not the ability you want to look at. The second ability is what you want to look at, because at the begin, at the end of the battle, that your drive check revealed a grade three. Discard a card from your hand. Choose one of your rear guards. Stand it, and it gets plus ten until end of turn. That is right. Apex Ruler Bastion rewards you for being Morikawa. Now, um, I haven't been following tournament scenes and stuff very closely, but um, near the beginning, I was um, I was hearing things. Through the grapevine, and uh, Bastion has been pulling up pretty well because <laughs> you just have to shove grade threes into your deck. It's very easy because guess what? The ride deck lets you run only four grade twos in your deck, and then the rest is it's all grade threes. Do you see the numbers on the top left corner of these cards? But anyway, we have Apex Ruler Bastion. We get four copies of him, of course. Our ride deck um, target is for grade two is heavenly uh knight of heavenly spears rooks so what is abil his ability is when he is rode upon by bastion reveal three great threes from your hand and draw a card now when i first saw this i was like eh, you know i don't really know if this won't be good but <laughs> you know in a deck where all you got to do is have great threes in your hand it's not that hard <laughs> Now, during your turn, if you have three or more grade three units, this unit gets boost and plus five until end of turn. Easy. Uh, boost and plus five. So, that's that's very easy. Knight of Heavenly Sword Fort. When this unit is rode upon by a Knight of Heavenly Spear Rooks, reveal two grade threes from your hand. Reveal the top card of your deck and call it to rear guard. If that card is a unit, if it is a unit card, put it into your drop if it isn't. So, 
you, you free i i did a lot of weird pauses there but you basically get a free superior call if as long as the unit was not as long as the card that you revealed is not in order his other ability is counter blast one she's one of your grade three vanguards and gets plus five until end of turn is <laughs> Not you don't re I don't know if you want to use that skill at all. Next we have Knight of Heavenly Bow Base. Base, base, base. The buttery biscuit base. Oh. Next we have Vehement Witch Ramana. Her ability is when she unit attacks, counter blast one, she unit plus five until end of turn. That's uh it's okay. It's decent. You know, you just want to push for power in this deck. That's literally all you do with with this deck. Push for power with tons of great threes. Next we have uh, Knight of Broadux Rough Luke. Put this unit into your soul. Choose one of your grade three rear guards. It gets plus ten until end of turn. Nice, nice, nice. Um, this is actually very nice. <laughs> I'm getting a little hyper, but um, yeah, it's a field. It's a buff. You put it into your soul. You're able to. I don't know if the, no. There, there's no use of soul in this deck. Um, but yeah, you're able to just pump your units and make them bigger. Next, we have Shadow Bow Archer Lisana, Vanilla, uh, Platinum Wolf. Oh, there we there. There's the Soul Blasting. So this unit gets plus five until end of turn. If you Soul Blast two, it's not limited to once per turn. So you can do this as many times you want. Next, we have Life Saving Angel Kurabiel. This is our Kansengado. Um, and then we have Olbaria again. Then we have Knight of Heavenly Hammer Gorgant. As our crit, Knight of Heavenly Pierce Gallus for as our draw, Knight of Heavenly Rend Leaf, 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 as our front Toriga, and Healer of Heavenly Staff Arches as our heal, and the Hour of Holy Judgment cometh as our order. My ability is Counter Blast 2, draw two cards, choose one of your units, gets plus five until end of turn. When I first saw this card, I was like, ah, this is kind of crap. But now looking at the rest of the deck, there's almost no Counter Blasting whatsoever. This card is actually pretty good because it is basically a Pot of Greed. You get to draw two, choose one of your units, and it gets plus five until end of turn. Very, very nice. Now, um... Good fields with Bastion. So uh, Bastion is very straightforward because all you want to do is have giant grade three lanes. You just want great. You just want them grade three lanes. You know what? If you have a Refluke in your hand, boom, put it into your soul. Give uh, Romana, give Romana a power boost, and then if you have oh, a hour, hour of Holy Judgment cometh, that's even more power, and then you just have whatever grade ones you want in the back. Now. Ideally, you want tons of grade threes so that you can just so you can activate um, Bastion's ability to give to to restand and give a plus ten to one of your grade three units or one of your rear guards. So <clears throat> um, the booster sets and even the uh, the festival set that's coming out with all the reprints uh, with all the foiled reprints of the start deck cards uh, does provide really good further support for this deck and yeah so you would just attack then oh no and you would attack again maybe or you know keep one open just in case and then attack with that if you drive check a grade three wonderful if you don't then you're kind of out of luck but if you did then all you would have to do is discard a card from your hand restand that unit gets plus 10 on gets plus 10 and you can it can attack again so that is very 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 nice and that is it for Keter Sanctuary all right so last two decks that we have for uh, our start deck opening video this <laughs> video is so long but anyway let's get straight into it so we have a start deck for Megum uh, Megumi Okura uh, she has the Sylvan King Magnolia and represents Stoink Chaos. Stoinks. Stoink Chaos. Um, this is a funny amalgamation of, for some reason, Grand Blue, Aqua Force, uh, Great Nature, Mega Colony, and uh, what else is in here? Neo Nectar. 
Yeah, I'm gonna make it. there we go. So we have Sylvan Horn Beast King Magnolia. Now, this one, th this deck I'm the most intrigued by, um, just because I think that it it can it can do something but uh i just haven't figured it out personally yet so magnolia only has one ability but it is really good uh at the end of the battle that it attack counter blast one choose one of your units until end of turn that unit can attack from the back row gets plus five if you persona row this turn choose three rear guards instead of one so you're able to consistently not consistently you're able to pump out multiple attacks from the back row which means that you could have the front row known to man and it doesn't matter as long as you have you know more stuff in your back row now you're able to you're able to um supplement power with uh with more units in your with other units in your deck because you know when you are able to attack from the back row that does almost always mean that you lose a booster um but like I said, more cards are coming out for this deck and making it really, really good. So, um, yeah, we have Magnolia. Let's see what's next on the back row. Next, we have Sylvan Horned Beast Lattice or Lettuce. I don't know how you pronounce this. Um, when you rode upon by Sylvan Horned Beast King Magnolia, sold best one, reveal the top part of your deck. If it is a unit, call it to the rear guard. If it isn't, put it into your hand. So, this is almost like I. Ah, what to say? Not Rook's Fort. It's almost like Fort, except regardless of what it is, it goes to... <laughs> it is usable. It doesn't go to your drop zone. So, uh, that's its first ability. And then the second ability is back row rear guard. When it's unit attacks, sold last one, it gets plus 10k until end of turn. So this thing can slap your opponent for 25k with Magnolia and no, uh, no triggers. So, that's nice. Next, we have Sylvan Horn Beast Charis. When rode upon by Lattice, or Lattice, we reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a grade two or less unit card, call it to rear guard. If it isn't, put it into your soul. Again, it's a it's a better rook. It's a better rook. It's a better fort. Uh, in the in in the way that it it is, whatever whatever shows up is still um, still decently is still usable basically. And then its other ability is during the battle it attacked from the back row. Uh, this unit gets plus 5k. So, not as big as Charis, but uh, still, um, still, it would still be able to reach something. Unless your opponent gets a defensive trigger, then you're kind of screwed. But, you know, when your opponent's at 5 damage, doesn't matter how small your attacks are. Because your opponent has to guard it anyway. Next, we have Sylvanhorn Beast Lotte. Starting Vanguard. Next, we have we have uh, we have Keyblade Bug here. We have three Seizing Slash Mutant Bruce Slash. Does nothing. <laughs> we have Sylvan Horn Beast Duger. If you have four or more other rear guards, this unit gets plus five until uh plus five. Uh, very simple ability, and it makes it decent as um as a front row attacker or even a back row attacker with magnolia but you also you want to you want to be able to really time that full you know persona ride six attack um six attack turn because if you don't if you if you mess up the timing if you go too early then you are prone to having a very lackluster field especially if your opponent hits a Defensive trigger that, that, that is never um, that is never a good thing. So Duger next we have looting pedals Stamalia Once per turn counter blast one soul blast one until end of turn this unit gets gets boost and 5k This is nice if you um, <clears throat> If you are stuck on Magnolia, you haven't been able to persona ride and you have resources to spare uh, She does become a 15k boost or you can always just put her on the front row, so you don't have to soul blast one, counter blast one. But it really, it really is um, situational. Next, we have Knight of Friendship Cyrus. Uh, <clears throat> so once per turn, soul blast two, reveal the top part of your deck of this unit. Call it to rear guard. If it isn't, put it into your hand. Uh, you're basically drawing one. If it isn't a unit, and you're getting a you're getting a superior call. Uh, if it is a unit, 
So yeah, that's that. Hopeful maiden Alejandra. It is she is our uh, our sentinel for this deck, which is uh, which is which is nice. And there's <laughs> Albaria again. Next we have Sylvanhorn Beast Jackalope as our uh, crit trigger. It's danger Jackalope. No, no, he's no danger. Just gives you extra damage. Next, we have Sylvanhorn Beast uh, Pullatter as our draw. Sylvanhorn uh, Beast Valen as our front trigger. And Sylvanhorn Beast Z Zlatrog, Zlatorog as our heal. And then uh, we have two order cards here. Call to the Beasts. Choose one of your units, gets plus five until the end of turn. Uh, until the end of that battle. Sorry, it's a blitz order. If you have three or more uh, back row units, it gets plus 15 instead of plus 5. So these are basically our traps, our battle traps, uh, that we can use from... Uh, that we can use from across our hand. We can't put anything else anymore. But, um, yeah, they come from our hand, and um, the this does sort of, again, alleviate the issue of having a small fourth attack from uh, Magnolia's ability. But, you know, it... Um, this, uh, this deck, um, above all of the other four is, is the weakest on its legs by itself, if that makes any sense. So, um, that is our Stoikea deck. <clears throat> and last but not least, and this is, uh, this is, this is probably the most, <sighs> I feel like I said this already, but this is probably the most interesting deck, um, of the five, the most interesting start deck of the five. Uh, Brant Gate, we have Tomari Seto. Yes, she is related to Seto Kaiba. <laughs> By way of first name. I don't know how that works. But anyway, uh, this is um, our Aurora Valkyrie Brant Gate start deck. And the main unit here is... Aurora Battle Princess Seraph Snow. Now, this deck is literally you pay the police taxes to get your friends out of jail. And um, for some decks, that is really annoying. And for some decks, it, it's been, it, it's sort of come to light a lot more that um, it really depends on the matchup. It is never always a good thing. Um, and we'll, we'll get into, we'll get into why. But, um, yeah, so we have four Seraph Snows. Her ability is, during your turn, if one or more of your opponent's cards are imprisoned in your prison, this unit gets plus 10. And if three or more cards are imprisoned, she gets, um, a, she gets triple drive instead of, uh, only twin drive. And her other ability is, um, from the rear guard or the vanguard circle, choose two of your unit, uh, two of your opponent's rear guards, and imprison them in your prison. Now, this really depends on the player that you're playing against. If they are ignorant of the ability, then this is a really good. This can be really good, but um, if they are wary to the, um, if they are wary of what this deck does, then it becomes a lot harder to be able to get the. Uh, the bonus drive check, but at the same time, you know, as long as you're still able to tax your opponent out of resources, then it's never really a bad thing. So, that is uh, Seraph Snow. Next, we have Aurora Battle Princess Reset Pink. When this unit is placed on Vanguard, choose one. your opponent chooses a card from their hand and imprisons it in their prison. So, um, well, we'll get into what the prison is in a little bit, but um, that's this, this, is a, this is a good card, of course, you know, rips a card from your opponent's hand of course it is only once per game because you can only ride this thing once unless you want to stay a great to ride it again but it doesn't really make as uh much sense to stay here that much longer uh, a great two um longer than you have to then if one or more of your opponent's cards what yeah if one or more of your opponent's cards are imprisoned in your prison this unit gets plus two so that's uh that's very simple and the next we have aurora battle princess kyanite blue when this unit is placed on Vanguard, search your deck for up to one prison card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. When this unit is placed on Rear Guard, if one, of your more, if one or more of your opponent's cards are imprisoned in your prison, counter blast one, soul blast one, draw a card. So, eh, pretty decent. It's, um, the first ability is what you, is what you, you know, want to activate every game, and of course it is 
it is inevitable to activate because ride deck. Um, but you do get your prison, and your prison is what makes the deck function. Without the prison, then you know you're kind of screwed. Uh, and then next we have our starter, Aurora, Aurora Battle Princess Ruby Red. Now, the rest of the the rest of the cards. So alert uh, guard gunner. When this uh, unit attack hits a vanguard, choose up to two of your opponent's cards and imprison them in your prison. This is nice depending on your opponent's field after you ravage it in your main phase because uh, Sayer of Snow does stuff and this does stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's nice because it's cost one. Well, it's not costless because um, you have to hit, but I mean, you don't have to use up any other resources. Um, trying to get this thing to proc. Next, we have Security Patroller. When this unit is placed on Rear Guard Soul Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's Rear Guards and imprison it in your prison. That's nice because it's a grade 2 and it's a little earlier in the game. Uh, next, we have Jeweled Combination Julian. Uh, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Aut uh, Autonomic Caution on the Rear Guard or the Guardian Circle. If one or more of your opponents are imprisoned in your Prison. If one or more of your opponent's cards are imprisoned in your prison, this unit gets plus two and five shield. So you know if it's in your hand, then it, then it's a bigger guard. If it's on your field, then it's a 10k slapper uh, or booster. And then next we have Craggy Beast uh, Gear Grand. This is our um, our freaky looking uh, sentinel. Then we have Spiritual King of Determination Ulbaria. And Battle Princess Loris, uh, Loris Yellow as our crit. Battle, Aurora Battle Princess Amy Orange as our draw. Aurora Battle Princess Fronte Rose. <clears throat> and Aurora Battle Princess Truce Green. Now, here, to the meat of this deck. Uh, we have Galaxy Central Prison Galactalus. So, the way that this card works is once you ride your grade one which is your well as soon as, soon as you hit turn one you get this card and you play it in your order zone uh for all my Yu-Gi-Oh heads out there this is basically um a field spell um overdress has introduced something called set orders which are orders that stay on the field because normally once you play an order it goes straight to the drop zone after but uh yeah that is uh that is this card its cost to play is rest one of your units which is easy you know if you're going first then you can't attack so you can just rest your vanguard if you're going second then just play a damn card <laughs> and when this unit is placed into the order zone soul charge three so as soon as you play it you soul charge three then continuous from the order zone. Uh, when your opponent can call a rear guard, yeah, normal call a rear guard, they can perform the following. So this entire deck is about imprisoning your opponent's units and cards in your prison. So basically what happens is you play this and your opponent, <clears throat> uh, as the game goes on, gets more and more and more cards just imprisoned in the in their prison and the way that they can get them back the way they get them back is by soul blasting one to call one of their imprisoned cards or counter blasting one to uh, get two of their imprisoned cards now like i said earlier it really depends this, I find that this deck is more dependent on the player matchup than it is the deck matchup. Because um, the decks that you run into, you know, like are pretty self-sufficient in terms of resource management. Um, but again, it, 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 it's really more dependent on the player that you're playing against. If they aren't privy to what the hell your deck does, then it gets a lot harder for them to play the game in general. And, um, yeah, so, because <clears throat> if your opponent doesn't know, then you have an easier time imprisoning and keeping things in your prison so, um, so that you can get the extra bonuses off of Seraph Snow. But, um, <clears throat> but 
uh, it's hard to it's hard to explain, but um, I am I am very interested in this deck because I want to see um, how far this actually goes. So I'm guessing a decent field for this would just be Seraph Snow, of course Persona Road. You know, even even without the Persona right. You know, you want to have of course you would have your your prison already up and running because you know that part is. Um, this part is guaranteed off of your grade one ride and the rest would just be whatever you know you, you just put whatever you is a very um is a very vanguard centric deck if your vanguard can't do anything then the rest of the deck doesn't do as much at least um my observations that's sort of how um this deck survives um but but yeah that is it. That is that is every single start deck uh, from one to five. All right, and that is every start deck that we got for um, Overdress so far. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, Bushy Road is going to go back to um, regular trial decks after this because uh, this is just a really good way to get people started. And if, if there are any of you that are nervous about um, not getting support for these decks in specific moving forward, rest assured, these decks will be getting constant support as the boosters go by. These builds in general, these builds in specific will be getting, um, will be getting support because... Well, I mean, the company themselves said it, and these cards, these builds are going to be um, very heavily focused on because these are basically the, like the these are basically the five main characters of the anime. So it'd be really weird for them to to stop supporting them. And uh, the way that Vanguard animes work, at least, is new support comes out for characters, but um, the characters' decks never really drastically change unless there's a, like a huge plot point to be um, to be served by doing it. So these decks um, are going to be in circulation. These ride lines are going to be in circulation for a long, a good good chunk of time. And that's <laughs> four dollars each. You know, like how much more? How much how much more do you want? <laughs> but anyway, guys. Um, just a few announcements. I will be posting up a um, an explanation video on why why I've been like why I've been uh, for all the radio silence basically. I'll be posting a video up for that, and um, I have a buy me a coffee now. So um, I don't really know how Patreon worked, and um, as much as I love just opening product all the freaking time, it, you know it does get a little. Expensive. And if you guys don't know what buy me a coffee is, it's basically you get to buy me a coffee. <laughs> um, link to it is down in the description, but basically it is it's it's basically like Patreon, except it's not membership based. I don't want to put anybody on membership right now, at least because I don't really, you know, like my 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 content isn't really um, membership worthy. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there you can spend five bucks, um, to buy me a booster instead of a coffee, uh, cause that's what it, but I don't, I don't drink coffee, I just buy boosters, that's my, that's my caffeine rush, but anyway, um, yeah, if you guys want to support the channel, that is, uh, that's probably one of the best ways to do it, and, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and me talking on and on and on and all the camera crashes and stuff but <laughs> anyway it is great to be back and with a with a video and yeah that is it thank you so much for watching i am jello the casual card gamer take care